Hare Krishna Prabhu, please send my humble obeisances. Our glories to Prabhupada. Krishna Gurudev, please accept my humble obeisances. Jai Hare Krishna Yogida, my obeisances, all glories to Prabhupada. Thank you, Jai. Recording in progress. Okay, Om Magyana Timarandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chaksuran Militanyena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Namah Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prishtaya Bhutale Srimati Bhukti Vedanta Swami Niti Namane Namaste Sarasati Devi Ghoravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shanyavadi Paschachadeshatarine Panchakaupata Rubyascha Kripa Sindhu Payevacha Patitanam Pavane Bio Vaishnavi Bio Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Hadvaita Gadadha Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So we're reading Krishna book, the Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. This evening we're on chapter number 40, entitled Prayers by Akrura. <laughs> So in the last chapter, we had Lord Krishna and Balaram get on Akrura's chariot and they were going to Mathura. And on the way, they passed the Yamuna, so they stopped to take bath. And Krishna and Balaram went first and took bath. And then they came back and sat on the chariot. And then Akrura went to take his bath. <laughs> When Akrura went into the water, he was surprised to see Krishna and Balaram were also there because he thought they had gone already to sit on the chariot. And so he was confused. He thought, how is Krishna and Balaram here in the Yamuna taking bath? They, all, they were already came back and went and sat on the chariot. Akrura was puzzled. He thought, maybe I made a mistake. And he went back. He got out the money, he went back to see. And he was surprised. He saw Krishna and Balaram were sitting on the chariot. So Akrura thought, maybe I just imagined I saw Krishna and Balaram in the Yamuna, and he went back into the Yamuna again. And when Akrura went back into the Yamuna, this time he, he saw Krishna and Balaram had become, well, Balaram had become Shesha Naga and Lord Krishna had become Mahavishnu. Of course, uh, Shesha Naga is the bed. He was in the form of celestial serpent, 
and Lord Krishna, uh, Lord Krishna in the form of Mahavishnu was laying on top of Sheshanaga, just like he's a bed. And Mahavishnu is there in his forearm form. And the Akrura saw that beside Seshanaga and uh, Mahavishnu, there were the four Kumaras, and there was Lord Brahma and Lord Shiva, and there were the nine sages and the eight Vasus, and there was the great devotees like Prahlad and Narada Muni, they were all there. You didn't say all the names I said. I say them demigod. <laughs> so the devotees were also there. Prahlad and Narada and the four Kumaras. And they were all offering prayers to Mahavishnu. And they were speaking, everything was very pure and very nice. They were speaking very nice words of glorification of Lord Vishnu. And Akrura, he also began to offer his prayers. Now, there are nine items of devotional service, beginning with hearing and chanting and remembering. And after hearing and chanting and remembering, then we come to things like worshipping Krishna and also offering prayers. Offering prayers is one of the nine items of devotional service. And if someone can offer nice devotional prayers simply by offering prayers, he can get perfection in life and go back to God then. Just like Maharaj Parikshit, Maharaj Parikshit got perfection by hearing, and Sukadev Goswami got perfection by chanting. And Prahlad Maharaj, he got perfection by remembering. And Akrura, his perfection was in offering prayers. We're going to hear Akrura's prayers in this chapter. So it's very instructive for us to see how to pray nicely to Lord Krishna. So Akrura begins by saying that I offer my obeisances unto you, my dear Lord, because you are the cause of all causes. Thank you. 
And then Akura says to him, he said, you are the original, inexhaustible personality, Narayan. Because Lord Krishna had changed into the form of Mahavishnu, so he had become Narayan. <laughs> And then Akrura describes how Lord Narayan takes part in the creation. He says that when you, are, you become Vishnu, you, when you take the form of Vishnu, you lay in the bottom of the Garbhodak ocean and from your navel a lotus flower grows. And from, and from that lotus flower, Lord Brahma takes birth. And Lord Brahma takes over the work of the creation of the universe. So we think Brahma to be the cause of the universe. But Lord Narayan is the cause of Lord Brahma. So Lord Narayan is the cause of all the causes. Then Akrura begins to speak about the different elements in the creation of the universe. And he mentions the different elements like earth, water, fire, air, ether. And then there's ego and the material energy and nature. And then there's the, li there's the living entities and the mind and the senses. There's the senses, the sense objects and the demigods. So they're all produced from the body of the Supreme Lord Narayan. Akrura then says to the Lord, you are the super soul of everything, but nobody knows your transcendental form. Everyone in the material world is influenced by the material nature. Even demigods like Lord Brahma are covered by the material nature. So even Lord Brahma sometimes cannot understand your transcendental form. And the great sages and mystics, they all worship you as the Supreme Lord. You are the cause of all the demigods and all the living entities and all the material world. And 
Oh, Krishna. Just a minute. The power went off. <laughs> I'll have to I have to get my open my book, the other book. This is what I thought might happen. Mm. All right, so uh, we were hearing the great sages and mystics worship you as the Supreme Lord. <laughs> and they worship you as everything. They consider that all, everything is you, you're everything. Some people do Vedic rituals to worship you. And they may offer different kinds of sacrifices as if they were worshipping different gods. And some people worship, they're fond of worshipping uh, they want to, they want to get transcendental knowledge. And they're very peaceful and they give up all material activities. And they just do jnana yagya. They just do, they just want to study spiritual knowledge to understand, to look for the absolute truth. So there, there's also some devotees who are Bhagavatas and they worship, they worship the Lord, Lord Narayan, as the Personality of Godhead. And they're initiated in the, according to the Pancharatra. And they take initiation. Archana. Hare Krishna. Can you hear me? Yes, good now okay. Can you hear me okay? Yeah? Yes, yes. So I'm describing there are some people that they're called Bhagavatas and they're initiated. And they also put tilak on their bodies and they worship the Lord in his different forms. Right, Lord Vishnu has many different forms, so they worship the Lord in his different forms. But some people, they're Shivites and they worship Lord Shiva. They worship, they think they're worshipping the Supreme Lord when they worship Lord Shiva. So in the Bhagavad Gita, it describes that when people worship demigods, they're also indirectly worshipping the Supreme Lord. 
เมื่อบุคคลบูชาเหล่าเทวดาเนี่ยหมายความว่าเขาเนี่ยบูชาพระเจ้าสูงสุดแต่ว่าเป็นการบูชาทางอ้อม But when they worship the Lord in that way, this this is not this is not the normal way to worship the Lord. The supreme personality of Godhead is Lord Narayan or Lord Krishna. And demigods like Brahma and Shiva, they're incarnations of the material qualities. Just like Brahma, he's he's empowered to do the work of creation, and Lord Shiva is empowered to do destruction. And Brahma is in charge of the mode of passion, and Lord Shiva is overseeing the mode of ignorance. So, so these qualities they come from the body of Lord Narayan. So Brahma and Shiva they are incarnations of these material qualities. So we should understand that before the creation, the only person who was existing was Lord Narayan. So when we worship the demigods, it's not on the same level as worshiping Lord Narayan. So Akrura describes in his prayers. He says, the, the mind of people who are devotees of the demigods are fixed on a particular demigod. But because Lord Narayan is the supreme, he's the super soul of all living entities, he's also the super soul in the demigods. Therefore, when when people worship the demigods, then indirectly it will go to Lord Narayan. And then Akura gives an example. He said, just like sometimes after during the rainy season, when the water, the the rain, when it rains a lot, then the the rivers flow down the mountains, and there are many small rivers. But not all of these rivers are able to reach the sea. Only the big rivers will go to the sea. So in the same way, 
when people worship the demigods, maybe they may reach, they may reach to the Supreme Lord Narayan, but it also may not. There's no guarantee that when you worship the demigods, they will go to Lord Narayan. So this, the, the success of their worship will depend on the strength of their worship. If they worship very seriously, very carefully, then they can get good results. But you're taking a risk when you worship the demigods. And you're not going to get the full benefit as if you were worshipping directly Lord Narayan. So, in the Vedas, it describes that when a person worships a demigod, then he also does some ritual for Lord Narayan. Lord Narayan is also called Yagneshwara, means the, the controller of the all sacrifices. So in the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna describes the demigods cannot give the, de you, know, you may worship the demigod with some material desire, but the demigods cannot give you the, that desire without the blessing of Lord Narayan. And this is mentioned in the Bhagavad Gita in the seventh chapter, text number twenty-two. And the Bhagavad Gita there it says, Mayeva Vihitan Hitan. It means that the demigods can award benediction after being only after being authorized by the Supreme Lord Narayan or Krishna. So if somebody is a worshipper of demigods, he should think, he should think carefully. He should think the demigods can give benedictions only after the blessings of Lord Narayan or Lord Krishna. So why should I worship the Supreme Lord? Why, why don't I just worship the Supreme Lord directly? Why should I go through the demigods? Better I go to the Supreme Lord directly. So somebody is worshipping the demigods, they may come to worship the Supreme Lord, Narayan or Krishna. So 
But if they think that the demigods are supreme and are independent of the Supreme Lord Narayan and Krishna, then they can never reach the, 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 the highest goal. Yeah, they're committing offense against the Supreme Lord Krishna. So Akurara continues to pray. He says, My dear Lord, the whole world is filled with the three modes of nature. Right, the three modes means the goodness, passion and ignorance. Everyone in the material world is covered by these modes to some extent. And that means that includes from Lord Brahma all the way down to the tiny plants and trees. But Akrura said, I offer my obeisances to you because you are beyond the influence of the modes. Now sometimes Lord Shiva and sometimes Lord Brahma, they are influenced by the modes. And we can understand, they are not above the modes, they are still sometimes influenced. But Akrura recognizes that Lord Vishnu, Lord Narayan, that he said, apart from you, everyone else is affected by the modes of nature. Then Akrura goes on, now he's going to give a description how everything in the material world represents part of the universal form of the Lord. He said, fire is like your mouth. And the earth is like your feet. And the sun is your eye. The sky is your navel. And directions are your ears. Space is your head. The demigods are your arms. And the oceans and seas are your abdomen. And, and the winds and the air are your strength and vitality. All the plants and herbs are the hairs of your body. And the clouds are like the hair on your head. Mountains are like your bones and nails. The days and nights are like the blinking of your eyes. 
กลางวันและกลางคืนคือเหมือนกับการกระพริบตาของพระองค์ And then Prajapati, the progenitor, is your genitals. And the rains are your semen. So in this way, Akrura has given a wonderful description of all the different phenomena. In the material world, and he relates it all to the body of the Supreme Lord. So it's very nice to try to remember all of these different items and go over them in your mind. Just like when you see the clouds, the clouds are like the hair on the head of the body of the Lord. And the wind and the air, that's the strength and the vitality of the Lord. The sun is the eye of the Lord. So try to go through all the different parts. Try to remember them. Akrura then says to the Supreme Lord, he said. All living entities, including all the different greats of demigods, and different kings and other beings, they're all in your form. So we cannot know you by just simply experimental knowledge. We have to understand your transcendental existence. We have to understand it to be like a great ocean, and how there's different living entities living in the ocean. Or there's a fruit. It's called the udumbara fruit, and you get so many little creatures, little insects, all come and live in it. Like sometimes mosquitoes, they come out from it. Akrura says that whatever form and incarnations you take, you appear to help to to save the people from ignorance. So everyone appreciates your incarnations and your pastimes, and they glorify your activities. And we cannot understand how many you have many you have so many unlimited numbers of forms and incarnations. And we cannot understand how many universes are coming from you also. So Akrura is going to mention some of the different incarnations. Uh, 
He said, I offer my obeisances to the fish incarnation. And then I offer my obeisances to the High Griva incarnation and you killed the two demons, Madhu and Kaitaba. And you appeared, then you appeared as a gigantic tortoise and you held up the mountain Madura on your back. And when the earth planet fell into the bottom of the Garbhadak ocean, you took the form of Lord Varaha, the boar, and picked it up. And you took the form of Lord Nishringadev to, to save the devotees from the fear of all atheistic conditions. Of the three worlds. Okay, you're back. Okay. Okay, so. Uh, we're talking about uh, did did we do vamana dev? We took two steps to cover the three worlds. Oh uh, no, good. just nursing a day. Okay, so that's the next one. As Lord, yes. come as Lord vamana dev, and you cover the three worlds. Okay. And then he comes as Lord Parasurama, the Lord of the Brigus, Parasurama, and he kills all the, all the, all the cheater, the administrators, the rulers who are all corrupt and who are bad people. And then you come as Lord Ramachandra and you killed the demon Ravana. So then he, he says, I offer my obeisances unto you who appear as Lord Vasudev and Lord Sankarshan, Lord Prajumna and Lord Aniruddha. And I offer my obeisances to you who comes as Lord Buddha to bewilder the atheists and the demons. And then as Kauke, you come to just to to kill all the the the, the corrupt kings who are ruining the condition of the world. So Akrura said, everyone within this material world is conditioned by your illusory, by your maya, by your illusory energy. And everybody is taking birth and dying again and again in different species of life. Uh, 
And Akrura said, I'm also like that. I'm also a conditioned soul. I'm thinking myself happy in the material world. I'm thinking I'm happy with my home, my wife, my children, my property, my friends. So, of course, none of these things are eternal, they're not permanent, they're all temporary. I'm a fool to be always in, absorbed in thought of all these things. I, but I'm thinking all these temporary things, I'm thinking they're eternal. I'm thinking my body is eternal. Although it's material, I'm thinking it's spiritual, but it's not. And because I'm always in thought of all these material things, I forget you. So when I forget you, then I don't have your association. So I'm just like a, a fool who, I'm, I'm just like a foolish person. A foolish person, he goes looking for water in the desert. But actually, there was water there, but it was just covered by veg, veg by by leaves, and it, it was covered. He couldn't see it, but it was below all the vegetation. And instead, he goes looking for water in the desert. <laughs> So conditioned souls, they're, they're, they're in the material world, they're very thirsty, they're looking, where is the water? They want to get some refreshment, but they don't know where to find it. But they're so, so stupid, they go to the desert looking for the water. So Akrura says, that, you know, I'm not able to control my mind. My mind is controlled by my senses. I'm very attracted to enjoy my activities. I want to enjoy the results of all my work. I'm, very, I'm a big miser. I don't want to give anything for anybody else. I want everything for myself. So I know that your lotus feet cannot be approached by anybody in this material world, any conditioned soul in this material world. So Akrura said, I can understand that I've only been able to come near your lotus feet due to your causeless mercy.
And Akru said, I know you can do whatever, you're independent, you can act any way you like because you're the supreme controller. So when a person is qualified to get free from the wheel of birth and death, it is only by your mercy, your costless mercy. By your causeless mercy, somehow it becomes attached to devotional service. And he comes to the shelter of your lotus feet. So then Akrura, after Akrura said like this, Akrura fell down in front of Lord, the Lord and offered his obeisances. He said, your, your eternal form is full of knowledge. So simply by fixing our mind upon your form, we can understand in full knowledge everything. Because you are everything, you are the source of all knowledge, you are the source of everything. Actually, when, when a, a Krura comes out of the water, you'll see in the next chapter, when a Krura comes out of the water, he will come and see Krishna and Balaram sitting on the chariot and they will ask him, did you see something nice in there? And Akrura says, anybody who has seen you, they have seen everything, everything. So, we, we, we have seen everything, everything is existing in you. So, anybody who has seen you, they have seen, they have experienced everything. Yeah, because Lord Krishna is this, he's the supreme powerful. He has all kinds of energies. And Akrura knows this and he says to Lord Vishnu, he said, you are the Supreme Brahman, you are the Supreme Person. You are the Supreme Controller, the Master of all the material energies. And you are Vasudev, the resting place of all the creation. And you are the all-pervading Supreme Personality of Godhead. You are the Super Soul, residing in everyone's heart. Yeah, as a super soul in everyone's heart, you give everyone direction, you give them knowledge, you give them remembrance, you allow them to forget. That's on Akrura says, I am completely surrendered unto you. Please give me your protection. Uh, 
บรมวบัดนี้โอ้องค์พระขวางข้าพเจ้าขอศิโรราชโดยสัตุดีแด่พระองค์โปรดคุ้มครองปกป้องข้าพเจ้าด้วย So in this way, Akrura is offering his very nice prayers to Lord, to the Lord, Lord Narayan or Lord Vishnu, who is actually the Vaikuntha form. It's like a vision of Vaikuntha, seeing Lord Vishnu on Sheshanaga. Yeah, So anybody who goes to Vrindavan, if you go to Vrindavan by like coming up for Kartik, and you go to Vrindavan at this time and say you're going to go for the Parikrama to go around all the twelve forests of Vrindavan, then the first place you go to, one of the very first places on the very first day, is you go to this place Akrura Ghat, the place where Akrura saw this, where he saw Lord Vishnu and Ananta Shesha, and where he offered these prayers. เพราะฉะนั้นในช่วงเดือนกาติกเนี่ยถ้าเกิดว่าใครไปวินดาวันเนี่ยเขาจะมีการเดินทักษิณาวินดาวันในหนึ่งเดือนก็จะไปในสถานที่ศักดิ์สิทธิ์ต่างๆในการเริ่มการเดินปริกรมานี้เนี่ยวันแรกเนี่ยเขาจะไปที่สถานที่ศักดิ์สิทธิ์ชื่อว่าอากูรากันก็คือที่เราอ่านอยู่ในวันนี้นะเป็นสถานที่ So who wants to go ใครอยากจะไปบ้าง Who's coming to me? Who wants to come with me? Let's go to Vrindavan. Do parikrama around the twelve forests of Vrindavan for a month. Anyway, sometime in the future we will go. Maybe not this year. All right. So that's the end of this chapter. The next chapter we'll hear about Krishna entering Mathura. And we'll hear about all the nice people Krishna meets in Mathura. Okay. Are there any questions? โอเคโอเคเอามือลงก่อนนะต่อไปใครมีคำถามอะไรไหมคะสามารถถามได้โอเคใช่ฮะใช่ฮะมันชื่อเอามิวไปกันค่ะฮาริคริชนาครูมหาราชดาวะพระนามที่สักเสียบมาฮัมบูอุบิเซส Hare Krishna, Chaya. My humble obeisance. Oh, uh, ก็ปกติทุสีรับปุกปานอ๋อคุณอาจารย์ครับพี่มีสองคำถามนะคะคำถามของพี่คือเอ่อถ้าเกิดว่าคือพี่มีความสงสัยว่าถ้าเกิด
เราสามารถบูชาพวกท่านได้นะคะแต่ว่าบูชาโดยมีความเข้าใจที่ถูกต้องว่าพวกท่านเนี่ยไม่ใช่เป็นพระเจ้าสูงสุด You can pray to them to help you to get more devotion for the Supreme Lord Krishna. And you can ask them to please take away the obstacles in the path of your devotion. บททดสอบหรือว่าความยากลำบากในการปฏิบัติการรับใช้ต่อพระเจ้าเนี่ยมันลดเลือนไป Lord Chaitanya was traveling around India for six years and during that time he was visiting many temples and he would go to many all the temples he go to the temples of Shiva and Durga and uh, he visit all the different temples พระเจ้าเจตันยาเนี่ยทรงเดินทางไปทั่วอินเดียเนี่ยประมาณหกปีแล้วในในระหว่างนี้เนี่ยท่านก็ทรงเดินทางไปท่านก็จะไปที่วัดต่างๆซึ่งในวัดระหว่างที่ท่านเจอบางวัดเนี่ยก็จะเป็นวัดของพระศิวะหรือว่าพระแม่ดูรกาท่านก็จะไปกราบไหว้บูชา So we're having if there's a festival for you know the devas you can also take part you can go and you can offer respect we we're taught to offer respect to the demigod ถ้าเกิดว่าเป็นเป็นเทศกาลของเราเทวดาองค์ไหนก็แล้วแต่เนี่ยแล้วเราผ่านอะไรอย่างนี้เราก็สามารถไปเข้าร่วมแสดงความเคารพได้นะคะเราเนี่ยอันเราสามารถแสดงความเคารพต่อเราเทวดาได้ But you should respect them as part of the supreme lord not as the supreme lord but as one part of the supreme lord เพราะฉะนั้นการที่เราบูชาพวกท่านหรือแสดงความเคารพต่อพวกท่านเนี่ยโดยการที่เรามีความเข้าใจอย่างถูกต้องว่าพวกท่านเนี่ยก็เป็นส่วนหนึ่งของพระเจ้าสูงสุดหรือเป็นผู้รับใช้ของพระเจ้าสูงสุด Akrura was describing in his prayers that the demigods are the prominent demigods are like the arms of the supreme lord ตรงนี้ Akura เนี่ยในบทมนต์ของ Akura เราก็เห็นได้ว่า Akura อาจเปรียบเทียบว่าเราเทวดาต่างๆเนี่ยก็เปรียบเสมือนกับแขนของพระเจ้าสูงสุด And when you worship them, you can recite the prayers from the Brahma Samhita about the different demigods. Just like there's prayer for Lord Shiva, there's a prayer for Ganesh, there's a prayer for Durga, there's a prayer for Brahma. There's a prayer for Surya, the sun god. There's a prayer for Agni, the fire god. They're all mentioned there in the Brahma Samhita, and in every verse it says, "Govindam Adi Purusham Tamaham Bajami," that I worship Govinda, who is the supreme lord, and it describes how these demigods are related to Govinda. Uh, ก็จะมีการสรรเสริญพระพระอาทิตย์นะครับหรือว่าพระจันทร์เหล่าเทวดาอะไรต่างๆไม่ว่าจะเป็นพระศิวะหรือพระพงศ์อะไรก็ก็จะมีการบูชามีการสรรเสริญพวกท่านอยู่ในนั้นแต่ว่าตอนสุดท้ายเนี่ยจะพูดว่าบูวินดัมอาดิปุรชัมตมหังเวจันก็คือบอกว่าสุดท้ายเนี่ยข้าพเจ้าขอบูชาพระองค์เจ้าบูวินดัมผู้ที่เป็นองค์พระวาสุสุดอันนี้ก็จะได้บอกไว้ So yes, we we do go. We go to the temples. We can worship in the festivals. We can offer milk. You can pour water or something, whatever. But we don't take the prasad of the demigods. And we don't chant the names of the demigods. Narada Muni, in his previous life, describes uh, his previous life. He was a, at one point he was a Gandharva, and he was a very good-looking Gandharva. And the Gandharvas are beautiful singers, and he he had a beautiful voice, and he got the association of many pretty women, 
because there were all these beautiful women in Gandharva Loka, you know, it's one of the higher planets and the women are very, very beautiful, very attractive. So Narada Muni was with all these women and he was singing, and he was singing the names of the demigods and he got cursed for this. So the Prajapatis, they saw Narada Muni joking with these women, singing the names of the demigods. They cursed him, they said he's too proud and they cursed him, he had to take birth as the son of a sudra, a very low level in society and he had to be the son born from the womb of a sudra lady. <laughs> So we don't take the demigod prasadam and we don't chant demigod kirtan, but we offer our respects to them as being servants of the Supreme Lord. And we ask them to please bless me, help me on the path of devotion. Is it clear, Chaya? อ่าพี่มีคําถามเพิ่มเติมค่ะ so she have continuous question, Guru Maharaj. So the, we say that when we worship Krishna, we should not ask for anything material. So she don't ask from Krishna anything material. But uh, to live life, she need some material things. So can she ask this material things from Devi God? No. You don't need to ask, Nine. you don't ask demigods, you, ask, you can ask Krishna if you want something. But you don't need to ask, Krishna knows what you need. Krishna knows your heart. So you okay. just you just ask Krishna, please engage me in your service. And Krishna will make arrangements for everything. In the Srimad Bhagavatam it says, Akama Sarva Kamova Moksha Kama Udaradi Tivrena Bhakti Yogena Yajeta Purushamparam. It says, if one has all material desires or no material desires, or if one has a desire for liberation, whatever situation one is in, one should worship the Supreme Lord, Krishna or Vishnu. เอเซมาบอกว่าตําแหน่งสโลกได้กล่าวไว้ว่าถึงแม้บุคคลเนี่ยจะต้องการความหลุดพ้นหรือว่าไม่ต้องการความหลุดพ้นหรือว่าอย
พื่อผลประโยชน์อะไรก็แล้วแต่แต่ผู้ที่ควรค่าแก่การบูชาเนี่ยควรเป็นกิจนาไม่ว่าจะจุดมุ่งหมายของการบูชาจะเป็นอะไรก็แล้วแต่ Somebody may think, "Oh, I should worship Lakshmi to get money," but Lakshmi is chanchala. She's very restless. She doesn't stay in one place. But if you worship Lord Narayan, who is Lord Krishna, then Lakshmi will come there. She never leaves her husband. She's always with her husband. <laughs> แต่ว่าธรรมชาติของพระแม่ลัศมีเนี่ยชื่อว่าเจ้าจลานะเจ้าจลาหมายถึงการที่ไม่ไม่อยู่นิ่งนางจะไปเรื่อยๆนางจะไปนู่นไปนี่อยู่เสมอเพราะฉะนั้นเพื่อให้นางอยู่นิ่งๆได้เนี่ยก็ต้องเรียกเชิญสามีของนางมาด้วยสามีของนางก็คือพระนารายณ์นั่นเอง When you worship Krishna certainly you get all the blessings of the goddess of fortune ถ้าเราบูชา Krishna เนี่ยแน่นอนอยู่แล้วว่าเราจะได้รับพรทุกประการจากพระแม่แห่งโชคลาภ And you have some problems, some difficulties. You may want people say, "Oh, we should worship Ganesh." No, we don't worship Ganesh because Ganesh he gets his power from the Supreme Lord, Govinda. But if you have some very fearful or dangerous situation, you can worship Lord n a s r i n g a d e v and Lord n a s r i n g a d e v is very kind. He, as we heard today in a k r u r a s prayer, Lord n a s r i n g a d e v protects people from danger. วันนี้เราก็ได้ฟังไปแล้วตอนอคุระสันเสริญนะคะบอกว่าถ้าเมื่อความสาวกได้รับความยากลำบากอะไรอย่างเงี้ยก็ให้คิดถึงนักสิงานเดชท่านจะปกป้องเดี๋ยวจะเคลียร์ใช่ไหมขอบคุณมากขอบคุณมากขอบคุณมากขอบคุณมากHare Krishna, Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. I have one question about Akura's behavior. When Akura took Krishna away from Raja, he didn't console gopis. He didn't count them down like this. So he didn't pay attention. Uh, to their feelings, and then uh, this uh, story uh, in Dwaraka you know, with the Shyamataka stone happened due it due his behavior. Uh, but uh, how was Akura supposed uh, to do? Uh, what he supposed to say, uh, Gopis, uh, like this? Thank you. <laughs> you got it, Archana. Um, how how Akura supposed to act? You know what's he supposed to what you know? Uh, what should he have said to the gopis because he was taking Krishna away from Vrindavan? So what should he have said? อากุระเนี่ยควรที่จะกล่าวอะไรกับพวกโกปีเนี่ยอยากถูกต้องเนี่ยเขาควรที่จะปฏิบัติตนอย่างไรต่อพวกโกปี Yeah, you you know what the is telling about how later on a Krura went to Dwarka and there was a, there's another story which we haven't heard yet. It's a story about a jewel called the Shyamantaka jewel, which was producing a lot of gold. So a Krura got involved with that jewel and there was a the, it got stolen and. Akrura got involved, and it ended up Akrura had to leave Dwarka, and he had to go to Benares. Oh, ah, 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 
การยามณีชนิดนั้นเนี่ยมันจะเหมือนกระหายไปหรืออะไรนี้ซึ่งกุรันเนี่ยต้องขอไปคอยตามหาแล้วก็ไปเอาตัวนั้นเนี่ยกลับมา So to go to Benares, you know, to leave Dwarka, which is a dam, to go to Benares where all the Mayavadis and Shivites are, it's not very nice. So it was like a punishment. This was like the curse of the gopis. <laughs> So Akrura had come there to Vrindavan, and he'd come there, and he took Krishna and Balaram away, and he never apologized to the gopis. He never apologized to Nanda Maharaj and Mother Yashoda. He just came there. And he you know, told them, you know, Kamsa wants you to come in Mathura, and he took them away. And he didn't say sorry to any of the gopis or Nanda Maharaj, Mother Yashoda. So what he should have done, he should have begged them, he should have told them the situation and apologized to them and said that certainly we'll bring Krishna and Balaram back very soon. So the, You know, it's just a matter of being polite, etiquette. You know that you you're coming there to Vrindavan and you're going to take Krishna and Balaram away from us. He should have apologized. He say that I'm sorry, but there's some very urgent work, and we really need Lord Krishna to come there. And please forgive me, but we will try to bring them back as soon as we can. <laughs> But because he didn't say any, he just took them. The gopis were not pleased. They cursed him. So he just simply had to say, "I'll bring them back very soon. As soon as the business is taken care of, they'll come back." Or, couple more hands are up. Yes, Guruvash. From String Devi Madhuri, please. Mm -hmm. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to you, Srila Guru Maharaj. My question is concerning Bhagavad Gita, chapter 2, text 20. I, I was preparing for my exams and uh, when I was preparing for the exams, I did not understand uh, this particular sentence. Nor having once been, does he ever cease to be? And then in the purport, Srila Prabhupada's purport is also mentioned. Uh, there is no trace in history of his coming into being. So I don't understand about. I understand that the, the what you call the soul, the, the the soul in attachment to the body then takes birth. But I don't understand about the souls, uh, the soul's existence. Uh, who created the soul in the first place? Uh, why, why is this, uh, what, why, what does it mean? I hope Guru Maharaj can explain. Thank you very much, Guru Maharaj. Rachana. Okay. The question is, Mahabharata Ji said, Dhamanyan, who is the one who is the one who is the one? So, Lord Krishna is explaining, he said, 
For the soul, there is no birth and there is no death. Huh? Krishna says, Najayate mriyate vajkadachan. Najayate mriyate vajkadachan. Nayam buddhva pavitava nabuya. Ajonityam shashvato yamparano nahanyate. That's another verse. Krishna is saying, For the soul, there is no birth and there is no death. So where does the soul come from? Sri Devi Mataji is asking, how, where does the soul come from? Where does it, well, we come originally from the spiritual world. We're all eternal spiritual beings. As souls, we're all eternal spiritual beings, but we've taken a material body. Where do we come from? We come from the spiritual world, you could say. We're all eternally parts and parcels of Lord Krishna. We have an eternal relationship with Him. To give the example, just like Sri Devi. Sri Devi has a daughter and her daughter goes to study in America. You know, so where does she, where does her daughter come from? Her daughter, you know, she has her mother and father in Malaysia. She goes to America, but then she remembers she has a home in Malaysia. She comes back to see her mother and father in Malaysia. So the same way, we're all souls and we have, Krishna is eternally he said, Krishna says, I'm the father. So we have a relationship with Krishna according to our particular rasa. We have our, our rati, we have some relationship with Lord Krishna, but we've forgotten it. Yeah. It does not come, it has not come into being. But, but the point is, we, we've always existed. We don't have a beginning. Just like uh, when we begin the new life, we're thinking, oh, I'm taking birth, I have the, it's a new life, my, my new life. But actually, it's just another day, it's just an, like another day, another life. We've had many births. We don't remember the past, but just like, we, you know, we, we went to sleep last night. Last night when we lay down to go to sleep, we went to sleep. We don't remember when we went to sleep, but we know we lay down and after some time we fell, we fell asleep. We don't remember when. So the same way, we don't remember our eternal existence, our real home, our eternal home. But when we go back to the spiritual world, we'll understand this is actually my home, this is where I'm from. Yeah. 
แต่เมื่อไรก็แล้วแต่ที่เราได้กลับบ้านเนี่ยเราจะรู้ว่าเราเนี่ยจะเราจะเราเป็นที่เราเป็นเราขึ้นอยู่กับที่โลกที่ Just like when your daughter comes back from America she comes home and she thinks oh I'm I'm back home this is my home เหมือนกับเวลาลูกสาวมาดีกลับมาเนี่ยมาดีก็จะรู้เลยว่าอ๋อลูกสาวกลับมาบ้านแล้ว So when we go back to Godhead, we'll understand this is my home. This is where I'm from. When that that home, that's eternal. It's, it doesn't doesn't destroy. It doesn't deteriorate deteriorate with time. It's eternally existing. <laughs> In the Bible, they have the story about the prod, prodigal son. Prodigal son. Uh, th there was one young man. He was from a rich family, but he left home. So he told his father. He said, "I want to leave home. I don't want to stay here with you. I want to leave home." He said, "Give me some money. Let me take some of your money. You've got a lot of money. You're my father. You should give me some money." So the father gave the son some money, and the son took the money and went. But he went away, and then all his friends cheated him, and they took all of his money, and he lost all of his money, and he had no money left, and he was just living in the street. Homeless, without food, and without proper place to stay. And he was trying to beg from people. He'd ask people, "Give me some money. Can you give me some food? Give me something." And then one man he approached. He recognized him. He thought, "Hey, you're the son. your father's a very rich man. Why are you living like this? You should go home. Go home to your father." <laughs> And so when the son, the son was reluctant, he thought, "Oh, I don't know. My father may not want me." But when he went home, the father was so happy, and he embraced him. My son has come home. He welcomed him and brought him into the home and fed him and took take. Brought him back. He's happy to have his son home with him. Just like when Sri Devi's daughter comes home, she's so happy that oh, my daughter's come home. My daughter's home. So when we go back to Godhead, Krishna is so happy that oh oh Sri Devi, where have you been? A long time we didn't see you. Where did you go? So we have to understand we are eternal beings. We are all eternal souls, but because we identify with the body, difficult for us to understand. Okay, Yogita, what's your question? Thank you very much, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. 
Your Gita. Thank you. Yes, Kutev, right, Paul. Kutev, uh, all the demigods were born, they appeared in uh, Mathura or Dwarka, but Akura was fortunate enough to go to Vrindavan Dham and actually have darshan of the Lord, Lord Krishna, originally, before he transformed into, before Vishnu Tattva took over. So what was so special about Akura Kutev that, you know, was he a, uh, I haven't read anything about him. Is he a demigod also who took a form of Akura or that is really a great blessing. I mean, he could personally meet Lord Krishna. That was a big thing. Well, I don't know what demigod he was. If he was a demigod, I don't know. I, I never heard he was a demigod. Nobody ever mentioned it. Anyway, mm. but he was like Krishna's uncle. Krishna would refer to him as uncle because he was in the Yadu dynasty. Mm -hmm. So he came in the Yadu dynasty. What was his position? I don't know exactly who he was and who he is, but maybe. Mm. I never he heard anything. Well. He's a, mm. he's, a, he's a devotee, he's a pure devotee. So he's a, he's a pure, uh, pure devotee. <laughs> yeah, he's a pure devotee. Yeah. Uh, pure yeah. devotee. Had to be. We learn he got perfection by offering prayers. He's our acharya in offering prayers to the Supreme Lord. By his mm. prayers, he got perfection in his devotional service. So he became a pure devotee at this life as Akura, right? Kutivo, before yes. that he was already there. Uh -huh. ah, okay. He became a pure devotee in this life as being Akura. Yes. Or was he already a pure devotee? He, well, he, he already knew Krishna was the Supreme Lord. When Kamsa uh -huh. asked him to go there to Vrindavan to bring Krishna and Balaram, he was thinking, I'm so fortunate, I'm going to see the Supreme Lord. So he knew the position of Lord Krishna before he went there. And when he came to Vrindavan, he saw Krishna's footprints, then he rolled in the dust and took the dust of Krishna's foot all over his body. And Prabhupada said, this is how you should enter Vrindavan. So Akrura is a very, very great devotee. And that was before he offered the prayers. Of course, his prayers himself, they were done at the perfect level. He was already perfect. But he has to play some unusual role because he, sent, he was sent by Kamsa. So he had to become the servant of Kamsa. But within his mind he was thinking Krishna will know my, that I, I, he will know my desire that I'm his devotee. He understood that Krishna will know my mind that I'm not really a servant of Kamsa, but I'm just doing this so that I get the opportunity to see Krishna's lotus feet and to be with Krishna. Of course, because he did that service, he got cursed by the gopis because he, he didn't get forgiveness from the gopis. When he took Krishna and Balaram away, he should have begged forgiveness from them, but he didn't. And the result was that eventually he, got, he was cursed. And that's why he had to leave Dwarka and go to Benares. He got involved in the Shaimantaka jewel. Okay. Really fortunate of him. Yes, great. Thank you. Okay. This is my last question from Vaishnavi Vivek. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, my humble obeisances. Uh, I was just uh, thinking, uh, even though Akrura saw the Lord Krishna's form, Krishna showed him the Mahavishnu form inside the river and Akrura offered prayers to Narayana, Lord Narayana. I was thinking whether Akrura was more uh, attracted to Lord Narayana's form uh, like that or it's just uh, Krishna wants to show him his different appellant, appellant form. Yeah, I think it's just Krishna wants to, to 
Well, he wants to convince Akrura that all of these different forms are there within the form of, within his form, with Krishna. The Krish, Lord Krishna is not different from Mahavishnu, and Lord Balaram is not different from Anantashesha. That these different forms, Mahavishnu and Anantashesha, they are all there within the forms of Krishna and Balaram. So Akrura, anyway, Lord Krishna chose to reveal these forms, to reveal Vaikuntha to Akrura and to uh, this allowed Akrura to offer prayers, to offer his prayers to, to this Lord Narayan, to Lord Mahavishnu. I don't think it means, yes. I don't think it means that Akrura is more attracted to Narayan, Lord, Lord Mahavishnu than to Krishna. I don't think that, but the, the effect of Mahavishnu and uh, seeing the form of Mahavishnu it invokes that mood of awe and veneration and offering prayers. You see, when you're off with Krishna and Balaram, it's a different rasa, a different mood. It, it, it's, it's more relaxed and there's more intimacy and sweetness. But with Lord Mahavishnu, and remember, I described all the different people who were all there, all the demigods, and they were all offering prayers. Everybody was surrounding Lord Mahavishnu, and he was laying there, and all the different demigods, Narada and Prahlad, and the eight Vasus, and, and the, the, the nine great sages, and the four Kumaras, and Lord Brahma and Lord Shiva, they were all there and they were all reciting and offering prayers, glorifying the Supreme. That is the mood of Vaikuntha. So, seeing Lord Vishnu, then Nakura was also inspired to offer prayers. But generally in Vrindavan, the mood is not so much offering prayers. It's more intimacy and friendship. Krishna enjoys more the mood of Vrindavan, the sweetness. So, Krishna was enjoying also the relationship. He was thinking, Akrura is like my uncle. Akrura came to see Lord Krishna. Of course, Akrura was also very respectful. He fell at Lord Krishna's feet. Lord Krishna put his hand on his head. So, there is something of the mood of Vaikuntha there in that relationship. Akrura, I guess he's not really a resident of Vrindavan. He's not a bridge basi. He's a Mathura. He, well, he was in Mathura. Kamsa sent him to Mathura. Later on he went to Dwarka, but he couldn't stay in Dwarka and he had to go to Banaras. So, yeah. <laughs> Very clear, Guru Maharaj. Yeah. Yeah, we have to be very careful in dealing with devotees. Certainly, you know, dealing with devotees is very sensitive, so we have to always be very careful and get their blessings. And if you've offended them, beg for their forgiveness. I'm sorry if I've offended you, please forgive me. You know, we must always take that, take the straw between the teeth be very humble and, and so Akrura, you know, he just kind of came, came there and he didn't really, he didn't get the, the mercy, he didn't really ask them that I'm taking Krishna and Balaram away. He was just so happy thinking that Krishna and Balaram were going to go with them, that he was able to bring them to Mathura. But he didn't think about the gopis, although the gopis were trying to stop him, but we, we didn't hear about Akrura trying to pacify them. He didn't really take care of them. So, it's very important to take care of all the devotees. Mm -hmm. It's very difficult, you know, taking care of... Take care of cows is also very difficult. You have to be very careful if you have cows and take care. If you don't take care of them properly, and you will get reactions. And if you have deities, it's also very serious. You want to be very careful in keeping deities at home. If you don't keep the deities happy, if you don't keep the house nice and pure and clean and everything, 
the deities will not be happy, it's very dangerous. And then also devotees, you have to take care of devotees, please devotees. Okay, so we've answered all the questions today. Yes. So thank you very much Archana for translating, yes. very kind. And thank all the devotees, was, uh, was the Nepali translation tonight? No, no, Guru Maharaj, I didn't contact them, so that's why. But we got few devotees here. Yeah. Oh. Next time, I'll ask them. Okay. Yeah, it's good if we have Nepali translation. I, mean, I saw there's a few people here that prefer yes. to hear Nepali translation. Yes. Okay, so try next time. Okay. Anyway, thank you very much. You take thank care. You. Hare Krishna, Srila Prabhupada Ki. Go back to Vrinda Ki. Yeah. Haribo.